This right here is the Void Waker, one of the strongest PvP weapons in Old School RuneScape. The weapon can be created entirely inside of the wilderness, and that is why I decided to make a new level 3, lock it into the wilderness, and not look back until I've created one of my own completely from scratch. My account is a Bronze Man, which is a mix of an Iron Man and normal account. If I get an item once, I can buy it as much as I want from the Grand Exchange, so I will be able to access that area as well. I can both kill NPCs or PK players for upgrades, as long as I've looted an item and once it's open for purchase. So let's get started. In the last episode, we managed to PK some nice new Black Dehyde ranged upgrades for the account. We then started killing Revenants on Slayer Task and managed to get an Amulet of Avarice. And that is not all the Revenants gave me. I also managed to get a Thamron Scepter, which unfortunately does not have too much use right now. And lastly, we gave RTO a shot and managed to get 100 KC with just a Matic Shortbow. Oh my god, no way. No way. No way. We actually got the crafts bow. No. Oh my god. Oh my. Dude. This is like one of the best things I could have got. I think the Vigoras would have been better, but the crafts bow is the second best. I. Oh my god. I'm saying oh my god a lot, but this I just started. I, this is the first task of the entire video I did on Revenants. 1,077 Revenants. We have both the Thamerons the avarice and now the crafts bow this actually unlocks like everything for me so with a strong start like that we're going to be selling all the loot that i've got from revenants to this point and also the rto loot from 100 in the last video to buy ether to charge the crafts bow and we're going to be getting into rto right away and with most of the money, I've bought 10,000 Revenant Ether, 200 Blighted Super Stores, and 100 Divine Ranging Potions, and we're going to jump straight into RTO. If you don't know how it works, you need to charge the Crafts Bow to be able to use it with 1,000 Ether, and anything above that is actual charge for the weapon, so I charged it with 1.5k, meaning I will have 500 charges to use in the weapon right now, and if I die, I do lose all of those charges. But I do have a decent amount of money now, and I can buy a lot of ether, so we should be completely fine. But it is now time to start the RTO grind, and in this video, we're going to be getting the Void Waker piece from the boss, however long that takes. In the last video, every single kill was around 3 minutes on average with the rune crossbow, and judging by the hits that I'm getting right now, it is looking like this is going to be vastly faster. And that's it, that was a 1 minute kill on RTO. Yeah, the crossbow is a game changer. Oh no way! We got the Claws of Callisto! This is the upgrade for the Vigoras Chain Maze, it is like a 1 in 600 drop rate. And it's worth nearly 4 million GP. Unfortunately, I cannot use this as I don't have the Vigoras Chain Maze. But if I would get one in the future, that is really nice to have. <laughs> First elite of the grind. I can definitely not do this as I'm locked to the wilderness. But uh, yeah, even the first step is undoable. And I don't really know the drop rate of this. I'll put it on the screen. You what? Uh, that was like 20 kills in between, and we have another class of Callisto. Let's have a look at the collection log. Two class of Callisto in 136 KC. Can we get this lucky on the Void Waker piece, please? I have absolutely no food left, and that is it. 36 max hit ranged, and that is the first death of the grind today, so that is unfortunate. Oh my god, no way! Yo! 168 KC and we get- Oh my god, that's 66 million GP! Oh, that feels so good to be done with this boss. Kiting this around is so obnoxious, even with the crafts bow. Yes, let's go! Huh? That is one of the three pieces done already at 168 KC. That is unbelievable. I mean, just look at this collection log. We got the Void Waker piece just now. Two class of Callisto. Unfortunately, nothing else but all of that in 168 KC. That is absolutely ridiculous. But with that incredible luck and RTO now being completed on the Bronze Man, it is time to go for the second Void Waker piece. This one is dropped by Spindle, and there's actually three overall items that I really would love to get from this boss. The first one is the Dragon Two-Hander, which I needed from RTO as well, but of course I still need it. Secondly is the Fangs of Ananaris. Unlike the Claws of Callisto, I can actually use this to upgrade my Crafts Bow to the Web Weaver Bow, making it even stronger than it already is and giving it a special attack. And lastly, of course, we have the Void Waker Gem at the same drop rate as the Void Waker Hilt at 1 in 912. 
Now Spindle's attack pattern is very simple, it is 8 ranged attacks and 8 magic attacks with some special attacks in between, and if you just time your prayers to this every single time, you're going to be taking 0 damage. Yeah, the craftsbow is definitely doing good enough to kill this boss, that was like 2 minutes for the first one, and we get a rune pickaxe, I've seen those before. And with this one, we have 10 KC done, no uniques just yet, but we get... Oh, Diamond Bolts Enchanted! That is the first ones of the account, I think. Yes, it is. I don't really know if there's any use for them, but maybe we can find one. So we just hit 20 KC, and that now officially means I can use the peak option to see if anyone is in there, so I don't have to go in and just world hop if anyone is in there. Did I just get nothing? 200 dark fishing bait? Where are they? Oh, they're over there. <laughs> what is even what even is this? That has to be worth like absolutely nothing for me to have. Let's have a look. 800 GP, 4 GP each. That is the worst drop I've seen. We're definitely making some decent money, but we're getting no uniques. So that is now 50 spindle KC completed, and we've made 1 point nearly 4 million so far, but if we get a unique, that's spiking up. I was starting to wonder when we were going to be getting them. We are like twice the drop rate of that, but that is definitely one of the more valuable drops. So we are now at 86kc of Spindle, and I've kind of realized how many Blighted Superstores I'm going through, and they're actually kind of expensive, and that is because I'm 45 prayer. If you don't know how it works, the higher prayer level you have, the more prayer points your restores actually restore. So I think it's time to sell my loot tab that I have of 8 million GP, and that does include the class of Callista because I can't even use them right now, I can always buy them back in the future as I am a bronze man, and we're going to be spending this on quite a lot of dragon bones. Ended up buying 1.5k dragon bones and even got 3 million GP left over, so let's see what prayer level I can get with this. It is very early in the morning right now, so there's not many people online, so I'm going to be a bit more risky, I'm bringing 100 noted dragon bones to the altar, and hopefully I don't get PK'd. You have got to be kidding me. I, li I literally just got here one second ago and this guy logs in the exact same second. Luckily he doesn't seem to be the best geared and he's quite low level compared to me. I think I already gapped him. Actually a very big level coming in here. 52 prayer and that is a massive unlock because smite is really good for PKing and on top of that... That is the last prayer I can actually use on this account as all the other ones are locked outside of the wilderness. Because they made a change where you can actually use the bottom bone in your inventory and it will just take from the top of your inventory every single time, I've moved my inventory to just spam like this and get the most insane prayer experience an hour. I honestly don't really know how far I can get, but that is 60 prayer achieved on the account, and also 75 combat, so that is a pretty nice milestone to have got only through Wilderness. I didn't think we would get this far, honestly, but that is 70 prayer achieved, and ideally I would love to get 71. If I have to buy some extra bones, I will do it, because at 71, you get one extra prayer restore from your potion, so that is definitely worth going for. You can't make this up, there's no way, I am on my last inventory, can I just get please 71, that's all I need, yes, we got 71, and I'm going to get PK'd right, I'll just die, it's all good, we got 71, that's all I wanted, and that was actually the last bones I had, so, I'm just going to be done now. We are now back to Spindle, and this is 100 KC done on the boss, no uniques just yet, but maybe now? No, dark crabs only, but I can definitely feel a difference with how much these actually restore now, and basically every single trip so far I've had prayer potions left over, and I've started bringing less and less every time, so that is really good. Oh, we are making money today! 408k the first grimy snapdragon drop, those are actually kind of rare, but they are worth so much. Actually, a very big level coming in here, 80 ranged has just been achieved, and obviously any ranged level that I get is just going to speed up the spindle grind, so they are very welcomed. Oh, no way! We got the fangs of an Anatis! Very early as well, I've been so lucky on the wilderness bosses so far. This is the ideal drop, honestly, 180 KC, and that is now the Web Weaver upgrade unlocked. Now, to actually make this on my own, I need 85 fletching, but you can actually pay Durs Venator, this guy right here, 500k, and he will make it for you. So, let's have a look and do that. I've never done this before, and I think this is kind of how you make the Void Waker as well, just with another NPC. 
And uh, yes, let's do that. And that is the Web Weaver Bow Unlocked. God damn, this has better stats than the Crafts Bow, of course, just straight up. And on top of that, it has a special attack as well, and it looks so good. The attack animation is different, and I really like it. I think it looks really cool. But on top of that, let's go ahead and give the special attack a try. It takes 50%, shoots four times in the air, has a pretty nice animation as well, and the hits are pretty good. I mean, let's try it again. This is definitely going to speed up the grind. No! Fucking way! What is this luck? 188 KC. We're done. I just got here with a web weaver bow the first trip. And we're already done. Another one in 900 please completed. On another side note, when I got the Void Waker hilt, I think it was like 65 million. It's 90 million now. So uh, if I add this, we have 143 million worth in two Void Waker pieces. But now I am not really sure how to get the last one from Calvarion without having any good melee weapon. I was kind of banking on getting the Dragon Two-Handed Sword, which definitely isn't great at Calvarion, but it is a crush weapon. And honestly, right now the best crush that I, weapon that I have is a Rune Two Age Sword. I don't have it in the bank, but I do have it unlocked. If we go over here and have a look, the Rune Two Age Sword. I could try it at Calvarion, but I have a feeling that is going to be horrendous. My honest opinion is that I don't think this is actually going to work at all. I think my kills will be like over 10 minutes or even more than that. But I'll give it a try. I'm going to try just one with the Rune 2 Age. And if it is really that bad, I'll try to find a way to get a better crush weapon. So even with a super combat potion and both these prayers activated for the highest melee damage I possibly can get at my level, it has been... Two minutes roughly and I've done even less than half the HP of the first phase of the boss. And that does not include the minions it also spawns that I will have to kill. So yeah, it's looking like it, this would be like 10 minute kills at minimum. And that is the first kill done with a Rune 2 Age Sword. It was a bit faster than I anticipated, but uh, still, 8 minutes per kill. And that means, by the way, if I go on drop rate for the Void Waker piece, using this method, that's 121 hours. So these are the stats of Calvarion, and you can see that the range defense of this is vastly higher than the melee, but I thought maybe the Web Weaver bow with all the range gear that I have is actually stronger regardless. And as you can see in the background, that seems to definitely be the case. Okay, that was a lot faster than I anticipated it to honestly be. Just below 3 minutes, which is nuts. I think that is guaranteed even faster than if I would have a Dragon Two-Handed Sword. So we're coming up on 10 KC here, and the Web Weaver bow is definitely decent, but I'm getting 4 mini kills sometimes, 3 mini kills, so definitely the slowest out of all the wilderness bosses. And there has actually just been an update that I want to actually deviate from this wilderness boss from a bit to actually take in. And that update is they finally put in the Revenant extension for a bigger task. You can get up to 150 of them in one task, and because of that, I want to spend some of these points and try to get some good Revenant tasks and actually give the Vigoras Chain Mace a try. Because if I would get one, I can upgrade the weapon to an Ursine Chain Mace and actually just blast Calvarion. So let's go ahead and unlock it. That is now Revenant unlocked on the account. And let's hope we get one. All right, I already had one from the last time when I got the crafts bow, so let's go and finish that first. You know, the best part about actually having the web weaver bow is that I don't have to save spot these anymore. I can just face tank them and kill them in a couple of seconds, and all of these tasks are going to be so fast. Just look at the damage I'm dealing. So that slayer task of revenants that I just finished off was 46 revenants. So let's see the next time we get a revenant task how big it is. You know, the more that I think about going for the Vigoras Chain Maze really makes me want to do it even more. Because I kind of realized that, that is the only thing I'm really missing on the revenants collection log. Except of course all the relics, but that is, I don't care about that too much. 
but if I would have all the Revenant weapons, the Avarice, that would be just so clean for completionism on the account. And because I can do all the tasks so fast with the Webweaver bow, I'm going to be running through these so quickly and also getting a lot of ranged experience at the same time, which is going to be beneficial anyways for Calvarion if I do not get the Vigoras. That is what we call a healthy Revenant task, 111 of them, let's see if we can get lucky. Oh, we, we got an ancient totem, 1 million GP, I already had this on the collection log, somehow I don't even remember how I got it. I am pretty much 100% dead here, I have no more food, and the only downside to having the webweaver bow is that now I risk my avarice every single time, and that is minus like 900k every death. With absolute record speed, that is the first revenant task done with the webweaver bow, and uh, unfortunately no vigoras this time. 135 more revenants, that is beautiful. Oh my god, ancient re that's the most expensive one I think, 16 million GP. Also another collection log slot, oh that is good to see, that is a lot of money on the account. That's actually going to cover so many potential deaths, 15.8 million GP, yeah that's really nice to see on the account. We have 18 million cash by right now, that's kind of crazy, and the entire bank that I have is 171 million. I mean, even at this point, if I'm going for the Vigoras Chain Maze and I really go for it, I might complete the entire log, I'm only missing 3 statuettes and the Vigoras Chain Maze. 135 more Revenant Knights defeated, and no Vigoras just yet. Now when it comes to Larian's keys, there has been a bit of an update, you can actually sell these now on the Grand Exchange, I am not going to be doing this because they are going for like, I think 220k, I'll only sell one of them just to see the price, 212k, so you actually make more money doing this, but uh, I would like to have the chance of getting Dagon High instead in the future. And for this video, this is going to be the last Revenant task, 125. They have all been very hefty and good tasks, so let's see what we can end on. At this point, I can pretty much stay here as long as I want, but the risk of that is of course if PK is like that to log in. And I have a looting bag that looks like this, 1.4 million GP nearly. I should probably go and bank. This guy has been attacking me for a while now, and that was my last food, but I am unfrozen here in just two seconds. If I can just run down a couple of levels, I can teleport out. One level, please. No way. I actually think I could have teleported out there. I think I missed it. I think I already was at 30. I had to go to bed yesterday, and I woke up now and finished off the task because there was just too many PKs here yesterday. I was getting PK like every five kills or something crazy like that. But that is another Revenant task completed. No unique at all, no totems, no anything. So let's now go and do the last thing of this video. As is pretty much a tradition at this point, we're going to be opening all the Larian's keys I've collected during this video, which wasn't that many this time. I didn't do too much Wilderness Slayer. But let's go ahead and open six Larian's keys and see what we can get. Dagon High piece, of course, is the dream to get, but everything else is just decent money, I guess. Two more to go, pure essence unlocked. And for the last key we get... Coal. Not that good. I don't think that was worth too much. Let's put everything into the looting bag and check the value of this. This is worth 339k. So if I would have sold all of these items, or all the keys rather, I would have earned way more than that. Like 1 million more than that. So it is definitely a risk to not sell them. But th the chance of getting Dagon High definitely is just enticing. The progress in this video was in incredibly good i mean just look at my inventory and let's actually have a price check of all of these items so we kind of know how much all the valuables of the account is worth 177 million gp and most of that made in just this video the void waker pieces the web weaver bow we made that completely from scratch with getting the crafts in the beginning and the fangs of an anatis later on so we are definitely making some incredible progress on the bronze man and i can really feel the void waker being so close we only need to get the one piece from calvarion and i would love to get the vigoras of course before we go on to that grind but with that, thank you all so much for watching this episode of Bronze Man, and I will see you guys in the next one. Remember to subscribe if you want to be updated on when I post the next videos. And until next time, guys, take care.